the length of the longer side of the longer side of the parallel sides of a trapezium is the same as its height. So this is a trapezium. So let me move this slightly. So this is a trapezium. These are the two parallel sides. So you got these two parallel sides. So what are they saying? Uh, the length of the longer of the parallel sides of the trapezium is the same as its height. So let me draw the height. So this is the height. So let me draw a height from here. So this height is equal to this height, obviously. Okay. So the longer side has the same length as the height. So if this is x, let me use a different color. If say, this is x, the height is x. What they're saying is the longer side is also x. That's very clear. Okay. It is also 8 centimeters longer than the shorter of the parallel side. So this is the longer side and this is the shorter side. So this is, if this is 8 centimeters longer than the shorter side, the shorter side is 8 centimeters shorter than the longer side. So if this is x, this has to be x minus 8. I'm not writing the units. So this is x minus 8 centimeters. This is x. So if this is x minus 8. Obviously, from year to year, if you take from year to year, it has to be x minus 8. Is it clear? Okay. Now, I hope you can understand these two are parallel or equal. These two are this and this are equal. Okay. So this is right angle. This is right angle, okay, and uh, these two, the this, uh, these two are equal. So if this is x, this is also x. So now use your logic. If this is x minus eight, and the whole thing is x, the this plus this has to be eight. So this has to be four, and this has to be four, and it does make sense. Four. So let me show you that. So if you add this plus this plus this, you'll get x. So 4 plus x, this is plus, this is plus. 4 plus x minus 8 plus 4 is nothing but x. Okay. Uh, so this is 4, this is 4, this is x. Okay. And the area of the trapezium is less than 50. Okay. So you've got three areas here. Yeah? This is one area, so this is A1, this is A1, this is A2, and this is, this is also A1. So let us, if this area is A1, the area of this would also be A1, because these two have the same area, they've got the same base and the same height. So this is A2. So can I say you got this plus this plus this, is less than 60. That's what they're telling us. So can I say A1 plus A1 plus A2 is less than 60. That's what they're giving us. That means 2 times A1 plus A2 is less than 60. So let's find, I got a rect you got a triangle and you got a rectangle. So the area of the triangle is base times half base times height. So this is this implies two times a1 is the area of the triangle that is half times the base. The base is four times the height, which is x. Plus the area of a2 is simple rectangle. So that is x times x minus eight is less than 60. So 2 and 2 gets cancelled. So this is 4x plus this is 4 times x is 4x. So this is x squared minus 8x is less than 60. So let me scroll down. So this is x squared minus 4x and taking away 60 from both sides minus 60 is less than zero. Now this is an inequality, a quadratic inequality. Now what does this mean? So if you, let me factorize, let me graph this, a rough sketch. So this is your y-axis, this is my x-axis. Now this is a parabola, 
if you graph this, this is a parabola. So I'll explain first. Let me highlight this. So this is, now if you factorize the left hand side, if you, this is, of course, you can see this is, this is simple. This is x minus 10 times x plus uh, 6. Am I right? Yeah. 60, yeah. Uh, this is minus 10x plus 6x. Six, six. It's less than 0. Now, let us, don't, let us not worry about this. Now, if you graph this parabola, I hope you understand the x-intercepts would be negative 6. Am I right? Yeah, it should be negative 6 and uh, am I doing something wrong? No. So this is minus 10x and plus 6x is minus. So this is minus 6 and this would be 10. Now think logically now. It's very easy to understand this inequation using a graph. So we'll be asking the question, when would this become less than 0? So we are talking about this part of the graph. At this point, your x, when x is negative 6 and when x is 10, that becomes equal to 0. For this part of the graph, this part of the graph, when x is greater than negative 6 or when x is greater than 10, this will become greater than 0. We are interested in this part of the graph. We are interested in this part. So we are asking, when would your graph or when would this parabola become less than 0? So that is going underneath the x-axis. So for this part of the graph, your y is less than 0, or this is nothing but your y, okay, or your quadratic equation that will confuse you. So I'll basically write at this point, for this part of the graph, it is less than 0. I can write like this. So looking at the graph and looking at this equation, I can say when x is greater than negative 6, when x is greater than negative 6, or when x is less than 10, this quadratic equation would be less than 0. Okay, that this is mathematics. Now we have to come to the reality. Maths and reality at time doesn't match always. Yeah, now x obviously cannot be less than 0 because x is the height of, so you can say, but x has to be greater than 0. This is mathematically right, but now you have to say, this is excellence part. But you have to say, but x has to be greater than 0. Because x is what? x is the height of a parabola. So x has to be greater than 0. Now looking, look at this diagram and tell me, x should be greater than some positive value. Okay, if you can pause, you can pause and think about it. x has to be greater than a positive whole number. So... I hope you have thought about the number. The number has to be 8. It cannot be equal to 8. If Even if x is equal to 8, this will become 0. Okay? Your, this side, the shorter side would become 0. So x has to be greater than 8. Okay, now I write also, also x has to be greater than 8 as the length of the shorter side the length, this is the real maths, the length of shorter side is x minus 8. So it has to be greater than 8. Therefore, in reality, for this situation, for this problem, your x should be greater than 8, but less than 10. And if you can figure this out, you should be pretty proud of yourself and you can give yourself five stars. So you're a five star student.